Good afternoon. I'm your weather anchor, Denise Lee. As we get into the month of November, we still haven't seen any cooler, consistent temperatures, but I'll have all the information on what you can expect in your weather later on in the show. Students and community members are signing an online petition in an attempt to bring a much needed crosswalk to a busy intersection. The MSU men's basketball team had their first home game. How did they do? Find out about these stories and more coming up. Your news, keeping our state informed. Broadcasting from the home of the Bulldogs. Now, from the University Television Studios of Mississippi State University, this is Take 30 News. Good afternoon, I'm Madison Bryan. Two suspects in a local murder case could now face the death penalty. And I'm Brittany Miller. Our top story this afternoon, protests against the election results and Donald Trump are happening around the U.S. The results from the presidential election are in, and not everyone is satisfied with the results. Since President-elect Donald Trump was elected the 45th President of the United States, protests have taken place in several cities across the U.S. Over a thousand people in Atlanta held a protest in Atlanta's historic old Fourth Ward Park before marching through the streets burning the American flag in front of the Georgia Capitol. Trump's home state of New York entered into its seventh day of protest. New Yorkers voiced fear of what changes will take place in the LGBTQ community and with immigrants. People yelled chants like, not my president, and held signs while marching through the streets. While some are expressing their feelings about Trump getting ready to step into the role of president, others are talking about how happy they are to have President Obama out of the White House. A Henderson Ward Stewart elementary art teacher allegedly used her Facebook to post a controversial status that has some calling for her resignation. Connie Shannon Barber is accused of posting a racist status and violating the school's social media policy. The police states that, two, that no employee should use a social networking website to post anything that would be inappropriate and that could result in the disruption of a classroom activity. An online petition was created for the removal from her from the Starkville School District the petition currently has 51 signatures. Two of the five suspects that are being held for the murder of MSU student Joseph Tillman are now facing new charges. Cyborus Pippins and Jalen Barker could face the death penalty if they are convicted of capital murder charges. The three other suspects are still facing accessory murder charges. We will have more on this case as it develops. Michigan Police Officers Michael Peters has resigned after being suspended for flying the Confederate flag at a local Love Trump hate rally in Transverse City. Marshall Collins, a black male attending the anti-Trump rally, saw Peters pulled up revving his engine with a Confederate flag waving from the back of his truck. Collins also reported seeing the off officer Peters drinking a beer. The officer was suspended without pay, but turned in his letter of resignation Tuesday morning. In his letter, Officer Peters said that he was sorry for the stain he put on the city. On Saturday morning, a car crashed into the wall and window at a Waffle House in Jackson, Mississippi. The crash left several people and the driver injured, and they were transferred to the local hospital. Waffle House restaurant officials say that they hope to reopen Sunday or Monday at the latest. There have been no deaths reported from this incident. On November 16th, Mississippi State University, the Mississippi Court of Appeals will hear criminal and civil appear, appeals at 1.30 p.m. Oral arguments will be scheduled on campus in the Hunter Henry Center. There will be a three-judge panel to host the court. This event is part of the Court on the Railroad Educational Program for the students and the public. The purpose of the event is to educate students and the public about the appeals process. Judges will be able to answer questions about how the court operates. This can benefit students interested in wanting a career in law and how the court system works. In Mississippi State University's master plan, the university expresses the desire to become more of a walking and biking campus. During the summer, construction on Highway 12 widened the road and created a new crosswalk for, for pedestrians to have easier access to the MSU campus. 
more reflectors and signs with lights were added to crosswalks around and at the entrances of campus. Despite these positive changes, a drunk driver hit Emily Case, a freshman political science major at Mississippi State University, while she was walking from campus to the Helix Apartments. Many people have voiced their frustrations and stated that they believe this accident could have been avoided. Over 481 people have signed an online petition to put a crosswalk at the Hardy and Blackjack intersection. Several comments on the page describe situations in which student nearly missed getting hit by a car on the way to class. Take 30 News will continue to investigate this story and update you as more, as more information is confirmed. The walking bridge between Mississippi State University and the Cotton District is closed due to reconstruction. Workers started rebuilding the bridge Monday and it will take a week to finish the repairs. They are putting down the wood and still need to wash and paint the bridge before its completion. In the meantime, students must take an alternative route. So, Parker, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening in the sports world? Well, ladies, we're having a nice little transition. You know, football's ending for college and basketball yeah. starting to begin. We got a couple of professional sports as well, stats, and I'll have all of that coming up next in sports. Thank you. We all depend on accurate weather forecasts to plan our day. That's why Mississippi State University is teaching students to forecast the future using real world news sets as classrooms putting scientific discoveries and meteorology to the test while honing on-air reporting skills real-time with local TV stations. And we do it so well that at any given moment, three out of four weather forecasts across the nation are being delivered by MSU-trained meteorologists who are helping people make crucial decisions that impact their safety working to ensure business continuity, and in many cases, saving lives. Predicting the future? That's what we're preparing for every single day, so that you can prepare for your day. Maybe you're like me and are looking for ways to pay for school here at Mississippi State. You can apply for grants, loans, and work study through the free application of federal student aid at www.fasfa.ed.gov. You only have to apply once per year. Now remember, grants, free money. But loans, you'll be on the hook for that later. The earlier you apply, the better. Mississippi residents can find state scholarships and financial aid at www.riseupms.com. Fill out the MSU General Scholarship application every spring in your My State portal for the upcoming year. Look for departmental scholarships as well. Looking for internships, co-ops, part-time on-campus or off-campus jobs? Visit careers.msstate.edu. information, follow us on our social media at Bulldog Budget. Your news, keeping our state informed. Broadcasting from the home of the Bulldogs. This is Take 30 News. Bulldog fans, you can finally take a breath of fresh air because our former Bulldog quarterback, Dak Prescott, has secured his spot as the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Prescott managed to throw up for over 300 yards with two touchdowns this past weekend against the Pittsburgh Steelers, not to mention his second winning drive of his career at the very end of it. The Cowboys are at an impressive 8-1 record, which is the first time they've looked this good since I was one year old in the 1995 season when they went on to win the Super Bowl. Prescott's the first rookie to lead his team on an eight-game winning streak since Big Ben Roethlisberger. Veteran quarterback Tony Roma has been cleared to play, but has said earlier this week that he is perfectly fine with being Prescott's backup. Owner Jerry Jones also took Prescott's side and said that they will continue to ride the hot hand. Now down to college, the MSU football team dropped a tough loss on the road this past weekend against Alabama. The Bulldogs struggled on both sides of the ball, and let's not get started on the special teams. Uh, let's, junior punter Logan Cook was injured, and Weston Graves was missing field goals. 
These disadvantages made Coach Dan Mullen have to go on fourth down more times than most coaches are comfortable with. It wasn't a complete shutout though for Bulldogs as they were able to kick a field goal in the second half. But that wouldn't be enough because the final score was 51 to 3. Despite this loss to the number one team in the nation, I will add, the Bulldogs look to play what seems to be a good home matchup against Arkansas. As far as their postseason future, the Maroon and White will have to win out the rest of the season against Arkansas and Ole Miss to make their eighth consecutive bowl appearance. Now to another sport that we're transitioning into, the Mississippi State Lady Bulldogs basketball team won over Maine 87 to 43 this past Saturday at the championship game of the Maine tip-off tournament. The Lady Bulldogs came off swinging as they would start off the game 15 to nothing in the first four minutes of play and had a 46 to 23 lead at halftime. Maine could have put both of their game points together from both halves against only our halftime points, but they still would have lost. And it's all thanks to the Bulldogs' efforts of Victoria Vivens, who led the team scoring 26 points. Next Wednesday, the Lady Bulldogs will face the Tulane Green Wave in Biloxi, Mississippi. Now onto the men with the football season coming to an end. Basketball is finally back in Starkville, and I am so excited. The Bulldogs opened up their season this past Friday against Norfolk State. In a very competitive game, the Bulldogs started off pretty hot from the arts. The game was very competitive throughout both halves. There's a couple of threes by Mario Kegler and uh, Quindarian Weatherspoon as well right here. Weatherspoon, uh, actually freshman Tyson, I would add, had a solid performance in his debut. And sophomore Quindarian Weatherspoon had a career night in his second opener against Norfolk State as he racked up 22 points, six rebounds, and two assists off his 30 minutes of action. Here's what he had to say about his performance. We came in with the mindset just trying to get a win. I wasn't trying to do nothing spectacular, nothing like that. I just wanted to get a win. I was going to do whatever it takes to um, get my team win. The Bulldogs are going to face Central Florida tomorrow at 4 on ESPN2. Now let's go over to volleyball. It's getting close to that time when MSU Fall Sports will play their longtime rival, and we know it, Ole Miss. To start off, it will be the Lady Bulldogs volleyball team tonight at 7 p.m. at Newell Grissom. MSU looks to better their SEC record with a win against the rival school after winning both meetings last season against Ole Miss. We're going to take a little step back, back to college football, and we've all heard the term and the phrase, any given Sunday. But what about any given Saturday? Because college football's rankings went haywire this past weekend. Let's start it off with the fact that the number two team, the number three team, and the number four team, that's Michigan, Clemson, and Washington, all lost which probably made a great day for, for the analysts at work uh, for the college football playoff. Uh, to go on with that, eight of the top 25 teams lost, and five of those, including those that I just mentioned, were in the top 10. With only a few weeks left in the college football season, those three spots in the playoffs, because we're not even going to count Alabama, could be within reach for several big-name programs. Now to some local news. On Monday, a couple of days ago, MSU students partnered up with the Special Olympics of Mississippi in the 2016 Unified Egg Bowl. This is the second year that this thing has been run. The event was a flag football game where students from the university were paired up with students of special needs. The game was against none other than Ole Miss. We've been hearing that name over and over again. The game took place across from MSU's campus behind us right here in the studio right now in the Y Center on the intramural fields. These students got their chance to go out and play the sport that they loved and also got the chance to raise money for the Special Olympics. The famous Maroon Band, Bully, and the Palm Squad were all there in support of their team. This event has been able to raise over $15,000 in the last two years. The MSU, MSU would go on to win the game 42 to 18. Chris Upchurch, a special education teacher at the Leak Central High School of Carthage, Mississippi, had this to say on the win. Touchdown by one point uh, to come back tonight and waited a whole year to av avenge the loss. Um, it's pretty special. And what a great way to raise money in a, in a great way for both, even though the rivalry is so, so vast, for us to partner up together and raise money for a great cause. That's all for sports. I'm going to toss it back up to the news desk for your look at weather. Thank you, Parker. Denise, I was just wearing a jacket last week, and now it is hot outside. Can you please tell me about some upcoming temperatures we're going to have? Madison, all that I can say is that these inconsistent temperatures are not going to go anywhere anytime soon, but I'll have more on that later on in the show. Flight. It's driven mankind's dreams for centuries. The ability to soar above the earth, to travel to faraway places, to connect distant points. Manned flights to the moon and space were once the stars for which we reached. Now, unmanned aircraft are the future. 
At Mississippi State University, our teams are developing unmatched, unmanned aircraft systems for an array of critical applications. We're so good at it, the Federal Aviation Administration named MSU the center of excellence in the field, asking us to lead the team that's creating the operating regulations for unmanned aircraft systems worldwide. So we're writing the flight plan for an industry that is the future. Our work means better information, more opportunity, and limitless horizons for you. The sky really is the only limit. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Take 30 News. I'm Madison Bryan. Today we have with us John Brazil, Construction Manager for Startwell Habitat for Humanity. So John, can you explain to me a little bit about what y'all do at Habitat for Humanity? Well, Habitat for Humanity is a ministry for the working poor. We build houses and our philosophy is uh, to go bold and try to eradicate substandard housing worldwide. And the way we do this is we select families who could not own a home through usual means, banks, mortgage companies, and that sort, sort of thing. What we do is uh, we're a nonprofit and we try to use the contributions of the community and fundraising to help folks get into home ownership and become tax paying citizens and hopefully help their children have a better chance to get to college. Mm -hmm. Um, for those that want to volunteer for Habitat for Humanity, what resources can they use? Well, here in Starkville, we primarily use Mississippi State University students, and we work closely with the Maroon Volunteer Center on campus, and we have a great relationship with them, and uh, I typically submit a build calendar uh, of all of my dates that I'll be there, and students can go online at the Maroon Volunteer Center and sign up, and we have a great response from that. Mm -hmm. um, about how many volunteers do y'all get a semester, and how long does it take uh, to build a house? I would say we typically get about 500 students every semester. Um, our average build time is three months, start to finish and that can vary depending on weather and things of that sort, but uh, we usually turn them over in three months. Okay. I know that I recently volunteered at Habitat for Humanity and um, I had a great time doing it. It was such a rewarding experience. Um, so I know that y'all are about to finish a house around Thanksgiving break. Uh, do y'all have any progress on that or a due date when y'all are done or when the family can move in? Uh, it, it looks at this point the family will move in sometime in early December we will essentially be done with the construction aspect of the house by Thanksgiving, which was our goal. And uh, of course, with construction, you deal with uh, electricians, plumbers, city inspectors, and all the paperwork at the end of the job. So I'm, I'm expecting first of December. Okay, and so um, once y'all finish that house, when do y'all start on a next one and where do y'all start? We will start uh, the next house the first week of March. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we primarily at that point in March use volunteers from something we call Collegiate Challenge. Uh, students from other universities uh, will spend their spring breaks and come to Starkville. And then around that, we will uh, also be signing up through the Maroon Volunteer Center. Well, that sounds like a blast. And um, I know it I is. had a great really time is. volunteering. It's been such a rewarding experience to see all the progress that y'all have made for mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I have enjoyed getting to meet you and getting to meet your workers that you work with. Sure. It has been a blast. And um, y'all's houses are coming along great and y'all are making a great difference. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Up next after the break, we have Denise Lee with the weather. Good afternoon and welcome back. I'm your weather anchor, Denise Lee. 
I'm here to bring you your weather for the upcoming week and I want you all to notice that the temperature today was 79 degrees. Winds are calm right now in Starkville, but this is not reflective of the weather temperatures we have been experiencing. Now, if you're anything like me, I've tried to put my summer clothes away and break out my winter wardrobe and in the morning time that's appropriate. We see temperatures of 38 around West Point, Aberdeen. Temperatures are around 38 in Columbus as well. But if you notice around the afternoons on some days, the temperatures more than double. And you can see right now that in Aberdeen, West Point, Columbus and Starkville, the temperatures are in the upper 70s. Now that is not jacket weather at all. Now, if you look at our temperature trend on Thursday and Friday, we have a high of 79 and 80. A cold front is going to come through and bring us down to highs of 56, 57, 61 and 64 going into the beginning of your next work week. Uh, the predictor will show us that the cold front that is coming through will bring rain. Rain usually means cooler temperatures. So we'll be getting some of that rain going into the evening on Friday around 8 p.m. The rain will come through and it will lower the temperatures down a bit, but they're still not consistent. If you look at your seven day forecast on Wednesday and Thursday, the high is 79 Friday. The high is going to be 80 on Saturday and Sunday. We have 57 and 56 going into the beginning of your work week. We have temperatures of 61 and 64 in the high. I want you to note that on Friday we will be experiencing some rain, a 50% chance later on in the afternoon and then those cooler temperatures at night. But Madison and Brittany, look at this weather. We have highs in 70s and 80s and then it drops off Friday with a cold front bringing us highs of 50s. Yes. What are we going to do with this weather? I don't know, because like last night I needed a jacket. Now this morning, it's right. just hot. Like right. It's so hot. So. It is. Yeah. Pay attention and look out for weather. That's all I have. These ladies will be back with more on news. One, two, three, cigarettes, four, five, six, packs, 10, 15, 20 milligrams of nicotine per day. Yellow teeth, bad breath disease, cancer, repeat, until, bam. Your news, keeping our state informed. Broadcasting from the home of the Bulldogs. This is Take 30 News. As the transition between presidents continues, the current First Lady Michelle Obama is working hard to preserve her beloved vegetable garden at the White House. Michelle Obama started the vegetable garden shortly after President Barack Obama took office. The garden has provided fresh fruit and vegetables for state dinners and excess produce is given to local nonprofits. Lady Obama re revealed that $2.5 million in private funding has been secured to maintain the garden. The National Park Service will continue the upkeep of the White House garden. There were a lot of intense emotions after Election Day. So 18-year-old Alejandro Andre from Virginia Commonwealth University decided to spread some love. Alejandro held up a free hug sign for eight hours. He stood in the cold with a smile on his face. He stated that one guy asked if he gave hugs to Republicans and he said absolutely. Another girl gave him hot chocolate and thanked him for what he was doing. Last Thursday on November 10th at 7 p.m. Mississippi State University's Panhellenic Pan Council put on a Greek sink stroll off for their annual Greek Week event. Teams got to arrive early to practice before going on stage. The stroll off was held in the Newell Grissom building. Um, uh, about four days full of activities that give back to the community, uh, philanthropy, community service, and then we do some fun things like we did tonight to give back to the students here at Mississippi State. MSU students could buy a ticket online for $1 or at the door for $3. Each fraternity and sorority organizations were in teams, and they also teamed up with National Panhandlenic Council. Each team created an eight-minute dance, which Steps incorporated. The teams got to practice with each other for a few weeks before taking the stage. The first couple of hundred students that to arrive at the event received a free Greek Week t-shirt. There will be another Greek Week stroll-off next semester. 
While waiting on the judge's decision, MSU students shined their lights and saying, don't stop believing. This year, Team 2 was proud to take home the win. The third annual Feminist Film Festival at Mississippi State University will be hosted by the Gender Studies. All of the movies will begin at 6 p.m. on the 13th. The showing will be in room 330 at the Union, and for all the other dates, they will be posted in Allen 13. The films showing include Pray the Devil Back to Hell, Winter's Bone, Iron Jaw Angels, and Zootopia. Bulldogs on the Move will take place in the auxiliary gym at the Joe Frank Sanderson Center, Friday from 12.15 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Starkville and surrounding area schools will bring students with special needs to participate in various activities organized by MSU students. The activities will include basketball, volleyball, kickball, relay races, tag, and obstacle courses. Volunteers are needed to help with this event. For more information about this event or to volunteer, please contact Nick Elder at 985-768-6548. All right, so for our sky watchers, enjoy the view of the special supermoon early Monday morning before sunrise. The reason it is called a supermoon is because it is extra close to the Earth, which makes it look larger than it normally does. Monday was the first time in 69 years that the moon has appeared that big, bright, and our scar night. There will not be another supermoon until November 2034. So we have, um, thank you so much for that. So Madison, um, have you attended any of those events that had happened? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. I actually attended the Greek Sync Chef Show and it was great. I had mm -hmm. the best time ever. Um, I know for uh, Panhellenic, it was a big deal for mm -hmm. them to attend and it was a great success. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I'm Brittany Miller. And I'm Madison Bryan. Thank you for watching.